Well, I'm a peeps. Uh, every single time, every single time I ever get to mute my computer. <laughs> <clears throat> It's, uh, it's very slow to respond. It doesn't look like me these days. Okay. So now we have that problem solved. Let's find the comments. Oh, technology. It just doesn't seem to get any easier. Okay. I'll get everything all lined up, everything going. Um, do I know what day of the week it is? Yes, I do. It's Thursday. So. This is yesterday's show and tell. Um, ap again, apologies. I've just spaced on it all. Days of the week, you name it. It was just, it was too much. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to get right into it because I have two things to show you tonight. And I'm trying to get them, gonna try to get them all in under an hour. So um, Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. What else should I? I always forget things at the beginning. Um, well, I stall waiting for comments. My computer's doing a very weird thing right now in the comment section. It's like, oh, there we go. And say so it's flashing things, but it's just outlines of things, and it wasn't actually things. And, mm, that's a very good technical description of things. Um, why is that doing that? I don't know. I had two things open, and I tried to fix it? Did I fix it or did I screw something up? Okay, I'm going to go with I fixed it. Because we're living positive today. I fixed it. It's all good. All right. Um, I have everything out ready to go, but perhaps maybe I should show you what we're making. By request, actually, you know what? Because, <laughs> because, because I was late. Well, a no-show yesterday. I really should give a few more minutes for people to get on. Um, especially because this is by request, the one project that we're doing. So I should give her a chance to see this out. Well, you know what, I'm gonna do it in the other order because then that will work. Okay, so one of the things I'm gonna show you is this month's paper pumpkin kit. Uh, I did open it because I was curious about the bag, <laughs> um, but I didn't look at it that closely, but I can tell you there's some fun elements in here. So this one is called Pick Up the Crop. And while the full kits are not available, uh, they, you know, they pretty much, I haven't seen very many full kits in, now that they're sort of into this new way they're doing things. Um, it's mostly just refills. So really, if you want to get the stamps and the ink, ink spot and make sure that you can, you know, make the kit exactly as it's shown, uh, you pretty much got to be a subscriber. Uh, let's see, it's, this method is great. Um, I can't remember what anything said. I just remember this huge hello that's in here. So this is this is the bonus. This is what I was checking for. You get a little canvas bag that you can stamp on and do stuff with. And we're able to order extra canvas bags. So that's what I was checking to see what the canvas bags look like. But check out this big, huge hello. Uh, thinking of you. Love you a whole bunch. You're the sweetest. You're the pick of the crop. Um, I love this image of the leaves, flowers, I don't know what they are. We got some blueberries, some strawberries, and some little, I don't know, those could be splotches or raindrops, I guess. So, but yeah, this big, huge hello, just to make a, let's see if you pull it off, just to make a, a fairly simple card with a big hello. Love it. Um, some linen thread, we like the linen thread. And then this month is Calypso Coral in the ink spot. It looks very orange on my camera. Um, as I say that, I realized I forgot to turn the other lights on, the extra lights. Anyways, yes, it looks very orange. It's more coral. <laughs> so this is what you get. Three of each of these three designs of cards. So they show you the cool pictures there. Um, but, and this is the great part. So we're making three of each. But you get two sheets, right? So for this, for this particular card, which has the, like the farmer's market wagon on it, you get an extra wagon. Um, according to this card, where is this? Let me see. Actually, from the looks of it, this very cool purple flower here um, is, is in this middle card. And it only looks like there's one piece of it. So you have like eight pieces of it for three cards. So there's a fair bit of extra there. But look how cute that little wagon is. 
And then same thing with, there's one with a picnic. It's got some bread and some loaves. Um, you appear to have like an entire extra sheet of all of those. So you've got the vellum. Oh, vellum's such a cool technique. In this case, the vellum is meant to look like, oh, I can't get the right angle on here, the bags that the stuff like underneath it, it's the bag it's being held in so that's kind of cool uh we've got our card bases so that one is the picnic lunch oh yeah we've got more stuff too this is for the other card um the last card it's to it's in the basket and so you can pop up just the part that's sticking out of the basket and then it looks very 3d-ish and so you make three of those cards but there is one two three Actually, get five or six of those. They're sticking together on me. Two, three, four. There appears to be five of them. So you got a couple extra sheets of these too. Uh, this is the card base that the cart goes on. So this one, like I said, you can I'll just fairly quickly because it's a big thing. So it's going to pop up really easily. So you pop this up on some dimensionals and you put it over top of this and uh, makes it very 3D looking. So that's cool. But yeah, lots of extras of stuff. And then what? So we got the flat on the picnic. I already showed you that. Uh, and then we got the cool envelopes, patterned envelopes. Um, soft succulents, they appear to be with a nice place for writing labels or addresses. Get some blue dots in there. So yeah, I think this is a fun card, a fun thing to make. And then the cards. Here, I'm just going to grab a card that's on my desk. The cards can go in this bag. So this is actually a fairly thick, which was this card? Well, that was my double pop open thingy. <laughs> I can't remember the name of the, the fancy fold was. It's a fairly thick card though. I don't know if you can see that on there. It's a fairly thick card. So I suspect that I could get, I don't know, four or five cards in this thing, like regular sized cards, or a card in a little Prezi. Um, so yeah, treats, all sorts of things in here. Again, loving the big hello. Uh, and actually, you can never have too many thinking of you sentiments because it's just a nice one. And it's a it's a nice sort of compact size so you can put on a small cutter. Um, a couple things that I found. So you could you could stamp in this, you could color with your blends if you because this is fabric. I don't like it. Whether you need canvas, cotton, I don't know. Um, if you try to color with your blends, it will work but they will bleed a bit. So what if you stamp an image or if you want to write something, just know that it's going to kind of like spread and bleed a bit. So um, you, you got to try to control your ink. <laughs> so like make very fine lines and like color back from the edge so you can try to keep it in. Um, this is sewn together, obviously. So you can see it's got, and it's got a very <laughs> quite reinforced, they put bias tape over top of it and sewed it down. So it's not all frayed or like, it's a very nice, neat inside job. But as a result, there's this much that is a little thicker than the rest. So if you're trying to stamp and you get too close to this edge, um, you're going to, uh, you're gonna run into a problem. I'm just gonna slide my chair over real quick here. And <clears throat> Stampin' Up has, I never tried this till just before. Oh, it looks like it's gonna be perfect. So we have all the clear blocks, right? And back in the day, um, I got this so I could do background stamps because you used to be able to get them on a wood block. But I, I like the idea of storing them in my single little cases, like the clear mounts, and just having a block for it. So, like, I have one of these blocks. It's the biggest thing ever, and it doesn't get used for very many stamps. You don't have that many that are that big other than the background ones. But the thing that it works great for, oh, it might work, is sometimes when I'm making a bag or an envelope or something or whatever I'm doing, yeah, this will work. Um, so I can put this block in the bag. So it doesn't, if you don't have one of these blocks, it doesn't have to be this block. But if you can put a chunk of wood, chunk of cardboard, something in before you stamp, one, it's going to push your edges off. Like, right, so now I'm not going to get too close to the edge because now my edges are over. Although if I wanted to, I could like shimmy this over a little bit and I'm still going to be clear to stamp right to the edge of this block. But it'll also keep it from going, like stamp on this side and going through to the other especially if you're coloring with blends, they will go through one side right to the other. But it just makes it a nice, smooth, flat, hard surface that you can stamp on. So 
If you are going to sample this, that's my recommendation. Put something in the middle. Minimum piece of cardboard. I save all the cardboard we get. Um, I would take it out of here and put it in my little stash over here. Uh, all the cardboard that like when you get all this stuff packaged together, it comes like this with stuff in it. Um, I always save this cardboard. So this one is obviously too big, but yeah, it's too big that way too. But if you cut it in half, I just made everything go out of focus. Hmm. I don't know why it's. Hmm. I just don't know why I've lost my focus. <laughs> I wouldn't be the first time I've lost my focus. Let's see if I can get this back. In the meantime, yes, cut this in half and at least put that in between. <clears throat> if you don't have one of these very large blocks. So there is the paper pumpkin kit, and it is very cool. Um, oops, that's not where that was going to go. That was going to go back to my stash over here. Again, you can see the cards. So you see they've stamped on here too. Um, some fruit baskets, some bread and cheese with a little bit of flowers and a little picnic -y type theme, and then the very cute flower cart. Um, I've also seen, and at first I thought, hmm, they're 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 um, they've only got one wagon. What are they doing? But I did see somebody who took the wagon and they just sort of fussy cut along the edge of the canopy part and raised it up so it looked kind of like an awning, like more of a 3D awning. Um, you could do that with the spare one that's in there too. But if even if you want to cut this one, if you cut it up and then just shimmy it down just the slightest little bit when you put the dimensionals on it, it'll sort of cover up the edge where you cut. Um, I saw one where they cut it and then flipped it over and made it look like, um, like a window placard, like a window box. So there was that. But anyways, very cool cards, very summery, very cool. I use a farmer's market in town. So if I need to make little thank you cards or anything like that for the vendors at the market, I meet some very nice people at the market. Um, this is certainly going to be a, a good one. So like I said, there's refills available. Um, if you're local and you're ending up with a refill, um, you want to borrow the stamps that they go with it, that's possible. If you want to order the refill, let me know. If you want canvas bags in addition, or even just canvas bags, um, they come in a pack of four. I can't remember how much they are. Like 15 bucks, 18 bucks, um, which at first I was like, whoa. But as I said, these are really good quality. Like they're sewn really well. So they're, they're certainly not cheap. Um, if that, if that's, uh, if you want to put something in here, especially if you were like, if you were given jars of jam or something, I would think you'd want like something you don't have to worry about the handle falling off or things like that. And you could make this so cute. Oh, goodness. And yeah, we like jam. So feel free to give us jam. <laughs> um, my son actually just told me today we were out of jam. Um, yeah, let me know though. Refill kits, baskets, or if you want to subscribe so that next month you get the full kit, uh, let me know. Next month's theme is something to do with the shore. I just did my newsletter today. You think I'd remember that? It's more nautical themed message in a bottle. Like, yeah, it's good. I mean, they're all they're all so good. Who are we kidding? They're all so good. Okay. Um, I am going to uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Take a quick sip of tea. It's fascinating TV when you get to let me drink tea. Okay, just gotta you know freshen up the freshen up the voice. The next one. Okay, so now on to our crafting project. Sorry, I'm saying I can see that this is showing up in there. I'm sitting my sweaters just long enough that I'm sitting on it, and I'm finding that it's hampering my movements. <laughs> okay, so this is what I'm going to show you how to make today. This is <clears throat> dimensional holder. At least that's what I'm using it for in this case. The one I make today, I'm going to do something else with. And I will tell you that um, I got this project from Elizabeth Green. She is um, a leader that is, um, that knows my leader, let's put it that way. And um, she's a very lovely lady. I, have, uh, option, or the, I was lucky enough to meet her and several of the other ladies that are in this group um, in moving into a convention in Orlando. <clears throat> and so she was showing us this. We have a a sort of a quarterly event where all the leaders is about 15 of them in total and usually on every any given event there's you know 12 of them sometimes more sometimes less that show us a project and so this was hers i don't know a few weeks ago 
And one of the suggestions she had made too is you could make this as a lovely cookie holder, right? So sometimes you can get like the big prepackaged cookies or even just to get a cookie and um, this is my thing, but put it in one of these like little cellophane, cellophane um, envelopes that we sell and pop it in there and here you go. And then it's just a, a handy little container afterwards, but you could hand it to somebody with a cookie in it. Uh, I'm gonna show you one other thing that I thought of today. So um, <laughs> the project Elizabeth showed us how to make. She, here, I'm gonna take this just as a sample. So <laughs> it was, it was the intent was that it was all made out of DSP. And then the, except for this little base at the bottom, and you, you just sort of put some cardboard. So that same cardboard I just showed you that you could use to like stamp between layers and stuff. Um, so that's how it was supposed to be. So I'm like, oh, perfect. So I love this Happy Forest Friends DSP. So we're doing this, we're, we're doing it as she's going, right? Like I like the challenge of trying to like keep up with them even though I have nothing prepared and nothing cut. It's like fun for me to just see how far I can get. So I'm going, <clears throat> so I pull up DSP. So let's pretend it's this DSP. If, let's pretend it's a full 12 by 12 sheet. <clears throat> and I needed to cut a chunk of this DSP. So I swear, I, I, I looked at it and I thought about it and I'm like, okay, and here, I'll give you an idea. So this is the size that we're gonna cut, right? Eight and a half by six and a quarter. So I'm looking at this piece of DSP and I'm thinking, okay, so I'm gonna score, score, it's gonna fold. So the D, cause I'm trying to figure out which way to, to cut and score so that you know, the picture is the right side up. Because if I did it this way, all my birds are crooked. If I do it this way, all my birds are upside down. As it turns out, I realize now that if I had done it on this side of the box, the birds would have been the right way up. But on the other side of the box, they'd have been like upside down, right? So it didn't really matter because after all this thought that I went to to try to figure out, okay, so this is the way to do it. I put my paper down and scored it and scored it completely backwards. And so my box would have been like sideways. <laughs> So instead, because I did not want to waste this DSP because it is so awesome and I only had the one package of it at the time and I, because we could only order one at the time and I was like, I can't waste this paper. So instead I took a piece of cardstock and then I took the paper that I had scored wrong and I just cut the pieces out and I mounted it on all the pieces. So instead of doing it DSP and like putting the car cardboard on the inside, I did this. And then in the end I decided, you know what, I kind of like this. So I'm going to show you how to make it this way. If you start with the same measurement um, that I'm giving of the cardstock in DSP, you will end up with this same frame. If you make this the same way, like the same size, and you just need a bigger piece of DSP to wrap around it. Like, so I'm sure if you wanted to make it the old, the other way, um, you could you could figure that out. But I like this way. And I think in the end, it might use less DSP. Um, it would certainly let you use scraps of DSP because like the bottom and the sides are the reverse of this paper. but um, if you had different ones you wanted to use, you could, or if you had little thin scraps, you could use them. And so, but in this, oh, and so, and here's the other thing. So this is meant to hold your dimensionals. I had previously made these little dividers for a different container. And so I have like full size dimensionals, mini dimensionals, and these awesome, I don't have very many left. You can still buy them though, but black dimensionals. So if you're making something like really dark, you don't have this very stark white sides showing. Um, so I just have mine like that, just so it's easier for me to grab them. You don't need to put dividers in, but you can. So there's our project. I'm going to show you how to make it. And I'll show you a little trick or two along the way, I hope. Okay, so this is our first piece of paper, which we needed at eight and a half, as I said, by six and a quarter. Then I also need a piece of cardstock that is two by five. So what I basically did is took like a full sheet of cardstock, it's eight and a half. I cut it down six and a quarter. And then out of what was left, which unfortunately you're a quarter inch short of just cutting like the strip off the edge. So I just cut another strip this way and cut it off. I absolutely love navy blue. Navy blue card stuff, navy blue on cards. It goes with everything. I love it. So I have no, no worries that I won't use all those bits and pieces for something. So those are our two pieces of card stuff. Okay, so this is our base, which we don't have to do anything with other than put a piece of DSP on. And this is the piece we're going to cut and score. So <clears throat> on the long side, my camera seems to, like I feel like my camera's, I, I think I might have hit it actually, but my camera feels like it's much closer today than it normally is. Uh, but when I put everything on to test it all um, earlier today, I just had my, like, I just had a book on the thing and I was like waving my hand going, oh yeah, it looks fine. So that's why I actually try to put stuff on the desk that I noticed. Okay, so on the long side, I am going to go, 
right foot punches in the way. Three and three quarters in from each end. Now again, <laughs> make sure you're using the right foot. Three and three quarters. And you know me, yeah, I don't want to have to actually take the arm out, so I'm just going to go flip the paper over and go three and three quarters. And then we're going to flip it to the short side. And in this case, just in case you're wondering, because you can't see the full thing, I'm using, because I'm only going in an inch, I'm just using this side of there, because it's way easier if you just do a little measurement. Um, so I am going in an inch on either side. <clears throat> and that's our scoring done. <laughs> So, like any good box, we're going to make a few cuts and trims, and and um, you know every time I do this, I do really do like dark color. Every time I do this, I think pick a color that shows up better on TV. Uh, I keep calling this TV for some reason. Uh, you can see score lines if I hold it really close. Well, that's okay because we're going to burnish them now, and then you're going to be able to see them better. <laughs> so this is giving us our basic box shape. We're just going to burnish this because we're making boxes and stuff. You want nice, nice crisp edges. Keep it, keep it square, especially when you're putting it together. You want to keep it square. So, um, again, and this is pretty much the same on any box you make. There's always one tab or the other that is just sort of for structure and for so you don't have like a little hole in the side that you're going to miter out with the corners. I don't know if miter is the right word in this case, but you're going to wedge out the corners. So what I'm doing, I know mitering is if you like cut across this way, so I don't actually think this is miter. I think I call it that all the time, but it's not. So I'm taking a wedge out of this one, and then I'm, so I'm cutting on the score line. And in this case, I'm cutting just enough to let the score line go in into the part that's getting cut off because it makes it neater. Okay. So there's my two little wedges. Uh, normally I would be holding this closer to have a better look, <laughs> but I'm on here, so I'm not doing that. Okay, so now, I guess there's, as long as you tuck all the pieces in, there's not really a right or wrong way. Here's what I like to do. The part that's going to be the front, I want it to go like this, right? I don't want to see the seams. You'll notice on this one, this is a nice smooth end. If you look at it from the back, here's where they join. Right, so I want to look at the nice, pretty side. I mean, you can't have all the sides can't be perfect. You got to pick. I picked the front one, and then I want this to be on the inside. But I don't want if I'm putting stuff in, I don't want to be hitting the edges of this. So I want to make it so that the back piece goes up, the little wedges go here, and the little so the little wedges are kind of trapped in between, because I think it gives you a cleaner box, right? So this is nice and smooth on this side. We're going to line this up so it's not going to be super obvious, but the seam is on the back. And then I don't think you can actually see it there, but trust me, it's a smooth finish on the inside as well. So there's nothing to hit when you're putting stuff in. So that's where we want to do it. So in that case, we know that this needs adhesive and this needs adhesive. So you guessed it, people. <laughs> Getting out the tear and tape. <laughs> and I'm going close to the edge. Now, if I thought this box, was, um, holy cow, I don't know if you can hear, but it just started to rain again. It's been raining a fair bit this afternoon, but every now and again, it comes down and it is so loud here. I don't know if it's being picked up on there, but holy rain. Um, if I was putting something very heavy in here, I would actually put two strips of tear and tape. Um, but in this case, because I know what I'm putting in here and it's not gonna be that heavy, um, I'm just, uh, we're just putting one on the outside. And I'm putting it like this, because I want to, I want to keep this edge nice and, and tight, and I don't if I if I put it in the middle or I put it over here, then this edge is going to start eventually. Every time you pick it up and move it, this edge is eventually going to start to separate, and it's going to start to look, you know. Hmm. Hmm. That's a, a crafting term. It's going to look meh. Nah. So I want to keep it nice and clean. So that's why I'm putting right to the edge. Um, I'm going to take these little. Now this one I went just a little long, so we're just going to hold him back. I'm taking those little pieces off. Those little pieces off. There we go. Okay, so like I said, back one first. Then I showed you all that before I put the glue down or before I put the adhesive because now I'm going to hold it so I can actually see what I'm doing. <laughs> Here, I'll try to lean forward so you can see what I'm doing too. Okay, so I'm going to line this up and 
I'm using my thumbs to keep a little bit of distance. This is my trick because I use tear and tape and tear and tape once it sticks, man, it sticks. Um, I was just tucking a little edge there. That's why I use my nail all the time, even, even if I don't have long nails. Um, if there's little bits sticking out, is if you just run your nail along the edge, it just it basically tucks them back in, whether instead of trying to cut them off, because sometimes you need to try to cut things off, you take down just on your paper. Yeah, ask me how I know. Okay, so I'm using this thumb is holding this part just a little bit so that it's not instantly adhering. But I'm also using it to line up the edges because I want to have this as square as possible. So once I get like the whole thing lined up, now I'm going to give it a nice little squeeze and use my bone folder. And yes, you know, not everybody will do this. I do it all the time. You notice I took all the tape off. It usually works for me. I don't generally tape things unintentionally, um, but if you wanted to, you could do one set at a time. Okay, so we're gonna do the same thing on this one, right? I'm gonna put this one down. And then using my thumb to kind of give me a little bit of separation to keep that play, I'm gonna line it up. Because one of the things, so this is where I was about to hit. Yes, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm good. So you see on this one how even the top is. You see on this one how it's not that oh that drives me nuts and it and it it looks off and any attempt with scissors to fix it generally makes it worse in my opinion so i'm doing this so i'm, I'm making sure the top's lined up the bottom's lined up it's all square i'm over to the edge then i move my thumbs out of the way so i can push it down so there we go box now i guess it maybe it's just personal preference um Maybe it's just because I find it easier to hold the box than to hold the flap, the whole flapping sheet. It is your choice. And as you can tell how I do it, I always make the box and then put the stuff on it. Um, it is your choice to decide if you're going to put the DSP on before you make it into a box or after. Hey. Um, so here's, what, I'm going to show you a little trick though. And see, for me, I, I, I like it when it's a box because I can see the edges better. As I, I've said this numerous times, but I like my little uh, like my little border to be around here. I like it to be 1 16th as opposed to 1 8th. I like a nice little narrow border. Now that gives you a little less leeway to put it on. So I like, I, I find it's easier to line up when I can see a very clear distinction of where the edge is. And I find that better in the box, right? Okay, so here's what we're gonna do though. So I'm holding this piece of paper on. I very carefully put it where I wanted it to go. Because you notice on this box, oops, and I, I was slightly crooked here, but that was just because at the last minute I, I moved it and boop. But we have our little notch here. Here's what we're going to do to get that little notch. And I'll show you what the trick is, <laughs> or what, what I use as the trick. So I put the paper where I wanted it to be. Now I have two punches. Obviously, if you, the punches are retired, but we have a lot of dies that will do the same thing. Now, obviously, if you are going to use a die to cut the little notch out, you need to do it when it's flat because you can't put this through the big shop. Um, so what we're going to do, and yes, it is slightly embarrassing, but I have to really think about which is smaller, one and three eighths or one and a half. Okay, one and three eighths, because <clears throat> four eighths is a half. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to start with the smaller of the two punches. So I'm holding the paper. This paper is not glued down yet. I'm just holding it in place to where it goes. I've got it all lined up nice and neat. Now I'm going to go and I'm going to put my punch in. And I'm and and you, yes, you could measure. Do I ever measure? Nope. Uh, am I pretty good at estimating? Yes. So I'm going to the center of the punch. And I'm trying to. Oh, okay. Let me just let me get a grip here. Get a grip. Okay. I have enough of a grip on the punch that I'm holding everything. So I'm centering the punch in the middle of the box. And then I'm also trying to center the edge of the box in the middle of the punch, All right? Because I just need a little notch. So this is where I'm going to go when I'm going to punch <laughs> awkwardly. <laughs> there we go. Okay, so now little bits for crafting. I do, I, and seriously, I put them on the side of the desk. They may show up in a project, they may not. One never knows. Um, okay, so now I have this, right? So I've got my notch. But I don't, I don't want this to be exactly even. As you'll notice, I attempted that here. I want the same little line, the little border on here. So in order to do that, I'm taking the one size bigger. Get this out of my way. It's in my way. So I'm taking one size bigger punch. 
But see, now I know where I want this hole to be because it lines up with the box because I lined it up. So now I can take this and I'm just going to, and, and I'm lucky because this punch is um, an eighth of an inch bigger, which means I'm going to get my same 16th of an inch border. If I had, if my punches were farther apart in size, then like if I, if I had a, if I only had a half inch and a, and a, what is this? Sorry, a one and a half and a one inch punch. Then that's a, that's a half an inch or one and a quarter and a half inch. Sorry. That's a quarter inch difference. So when I cut my DSP here, I should cut it with a quarter inch difference. So I get a, um, a one eighth border instead of a one sixteenth. I hope that makes sense. In my head, it does. Um, I'm very good at the fractions now. <laughs> so in this case, you'll see, like I'm just cutting off 1 16th, right? But that's all I want to cut off because I happen to have the right size punches because I want that same size border that I have all the way around the edge at 1 16th. And unfortunately, this blue is very hard to see just a bit. I'm just going to take a piece of cardstock. So you see, I have my same reveal. Right. If I had left it the other way, this would have been up like this. So I'd have had a, a border on three sides, but not on, on there. But by doing this and by I've moved it now, I can't line it up with one, one thumb. Here we go. So by doing it that way, though, so I if I hold the paper in place and punch out the first hole and then just use a bigger, I have the same reveal the whole way around. And yes, I'm picky. I want the same reveal the whole way around. So that was my little trick for doing that. Double punch, double die, however you do it. Do the small one first. And then do the big one. So now I'm just going to put my, um, I'm just using seal. This is, once it's on the box, it's not going to, um, it doesn't need to be tearing tape. It's not going to be, you know, fussy to vote a bunch. Um, so I'm going to I'm going to put all these on so that I can actually finish this project so you can see what I'm about to do. But I will tell you as I'm doing this, there is in the new Christmas catalog or holiday mini. Um, <laughs> okay, so I can't even see myself where I'm doing this. There is many many good things, and in the celebration catalog, there's a bunch of coordinating projects. Projects, sorry. So one of the things there's this great. Um, Three rings. I can't remember the actual name of the set. Ringed with nature, it's called. And it's tree rings. And it comes with this DSP. I put this slightly crooked. I'm trying to fix it as I talk. Um, there is DSP that comes with it in the celebration catalog. And this is one of the sheets of it. There's also another set. Um, it seems to be a mix of a bunch of things, this particular DSP, but there's another set that's in the holiday catalog that has this fluffy little fat bird in it, but oh my God, is this paper not the cutest? I, it's almost it's almost hard to do what I'm about to do. Um, and you know what I should have done? I'll show you when we get to the other side. What I should have done is I should have mapped it out to make sure, because I cut two pieces. I should have mapped out which was the better side to cut the loops in. Mm, you'll see it in a minute. Anyways, this paper is awesome. So with the $60 purchase out of the other catalog, you can get a package of this paper. And I can already tell you, I've got several packages of this paper because there's houses, poinsettias, birds, tree rings. And, and I know, <laughs> I know maybe it's not the same, you know, humor for everybody, but for me <laughs> and for my forestry friends, um, a picture of a, a, tr a tree ring, a cookie, where you can see all the rings in the tree with a, you're how old? Makes a hilarious birthday card. <laughs> I think so. I love that. It's got a very cool embossing folder and and die that kind of work together to make these really cool cookies. That is what you cut when you slice a chunk off a log. It's called a cookie. Um, you'll see you'll see projects made with that um, on one of my products on braid. Not tomorrow's because um, I just got it recently and there's so many things to do with it I haven't quite finished. Um, I did start making Christmas cards though, and I used a few of the dies out of it and stuff. And, so, um, but yeah, you'll see a bunch of stuff out of there, but this paper is just fantastic. Now on the other one, I 
I flipped the paper over on the sides and on the bottom. And I had it just a cute pattern. But in the case of this one, I love these birds so much that I don't want to. You know what? It just occurred to me. Oh no, it's the way I cut it. I was thinking, did I make it so like the scene wraps like this, but I didn't. Okay. So now we have the, the box. Um, this is the back side of the paper though. It's just kind of very cool. But because most of this is gonna get covered, I think I'm just, oops. I'm sorry, birds. I'm actually just gonna flip this piece of paper over for the base. Um, because I'm not going to see enough there. Oh, the other one. So I'm putting this one on. I'm lining all the papers in. Um, seriously, <laughs> this navy blue is, I got to find something, something contrasting so I can see where the edges are. Okay, so <clears throat> there we go. I am going to use tear and tape on the bottom of this box. <clears throat> you could use a seal plus. You can certainly use white glue. Um, I think you've noticed that I rarely use white glue and it's just because I make such a mess with it. Um, which really, thank God that's hereditary because if my son hadn't been making the horrendous mess, in fairness, he was like four years old, not quite four years old. Um, but if he had not made the horrendous mess he did with the white glue at Christmas, that made me pay so much attention to the booth next to me a couple months later at the teacher's convention in February, um, which is where I met Tammy Ben <laughs> and, and uh, had a chat with her about seal, which at the time was called snail, but the, the, the our tape runner things, I would have probably wouldn't have even noticed, but I was so fascinated by how neat it was compared to the glue mess that that is how my Stampin' Up story, story started. Okay, so I am, I'm putting this on, on my table just so I can see. I'm lining it up so I get it straight. And then again, your balloon folder. It's not just for creasing cardstock, man. It's for everything. So my fingers are not long enough to reach down here. So I use it. Okay, so there we go. Ah, nice stand, right? So yeah, dimensionals. Um, I did notice that, so this is a regular piece of cardstock or card base. I mean, you can fit one card in it if you put it at an angle, but in, I mean, and maybe the envelope. But you can't you can't put a, a full card. This is not big enough for like a full card to go in. But I did notice. I remember I made these oh, a couple weeks ago now. I think this this card just cracks me up. <laughs> I put little buttons on it or a flower, depending if I was trying to make it you know just cool or or like super girly. So I made a couple of these extra cards though because I thought this is fun. If I have to send anybody anything, I'm going to pop it in one of these. So I did notice that this is a great size to put note cards in. So if you want to prep a bunch of note cards and just have them ready so that if you got to send to me, if like if somebody said to me, can you can you send me Well, here, I'll give an example. I can show you a little better from the last time. So these are the squares we made for our sampler swap. This is what I made with my the hippo. I was showing you the hippo stuff last week. I swear to God, this hippo is going to get a workout because, oh, I love this hippo. OK, so we had to mail these squares to a bunch of people in the swap, but I couldn't just mail them. So yeah, pop out a card, pop in a square, off you go. Um, somebody says, hey, could you cut me a couple labels this size? Sure, pop them in, they, out they go. So I, I'm gonna have note cards just kind of handy for, I have the little mini cards as well, but this works great just to have a stack, a, a supply of note cards on your desk. But the reason I'm not decorating the front of this one, like I did this one, because this one has die cuts on it, right? Die cut, a little label, another die cut, and then my cute little, dancing on the stump bear on the back. Um, the reason I'm not doing that is because I'm going to cover the front up. Because this is what I thought as I was looking at it the other day. And partially because I was looking at the mess on my desk thinking, I've got to do something about this, was what am I constantly searching for on my desk? My sticky notes, love sticky notes. My pen, because I do frequently bury my pen. And although I do have a calendar behind me, Yes, sometimes I am that lazy that I would rather it was in front of me so I didn't have to turn around. So then it occurred to me, I should make this, oh, so I didn't do too bad. I should make this into like a little desk caddy. Now here's where I said earlier, I should have really looked. But see this little dude peeking out? That alone makes it worth it for me. But what I really should have done before I notched this piece out is I should have held this calendar like this and went, okay, that's, that's what I get covered. And then I should have looked at this piece of paper and said, uh, that's what I get covered. 
See, and this one would have been notched out if it was. You know what? I, I'm about the same. I get a little more of this bird, but I still have one peeking out. So I'm, I'm about the same. But that's maybe what you should do if you're going to cover a big chunk of the front. Figure out which, because when you cut the DSP, it's all random, right? Um, if you, well, unless, unless you want to cut a lot of DSP so you can like go in the center and specifically cut out the piece you want, you just get what you get, right? It's kindergarten. You get what you get and you don't get upset. Um, I know my son learned that in the kindergarten. We said it a million times when he was little. So this is what I was thinking. I'm going to put this on the front. So now I have already done this. You didn't have to watch me do it. Um, I put tear and tape on the back of this calendar. So these calendars are great. We're going to make a bunch of calendars in our a uh, little extravagant or well the one I do at my house um, we're going to make one of one of the fall classes I do not the, the Christmas extravagant well um, we're going to make some of these little calendar projects this might just be one of them <laughs> I'm going to get a I'm going to get an opinion on what people want because we were making desk calendars before that were just like little fold-up ones but I think the addition of pen and sticky notes and I'm just again eyeballing because I never measure. Um, oops, I do drop things a lot though. Have you noticed that? Um, I'm just eyeballing to center it again between these two edges. And then I'm kind of centering it between this lip and this. Oops, I don't know why that keeps going out of focus for me. So that's how I did it. So now I have my calendar stuck down on the, so yeah, the adhesive's on the, on the cardboard. So it's got a good solid base. And then, yeah, as I go, I'm just gonna rip my calendars off. And there, and this will fit. Like more than I usually do have more than one sticky note. <laughs> Again, I'm not totally sure where they all are. Um, as I look around my desk thinking, where's my little pile of sticky notes? Because I have different sizes of them. Um, I see that I have receipts on my desk. Uh, I could certainly do, make it into a business caddy and put receipts in it. Um, you could, well, you could put dividers in it if you wanted to, or even if you didn't and just wanted to make it like adhesives or some of your like most common tools. There's so many things you could do with this. What ideas did you come up with for what you could do with this? Anyways, there's lots. So in my case, I now have one for my dimensionals and one with my calendar so that I can put hunting down my sticky notes and my pen. So there you go. Um, I will likely end up making a third one because I realize now I did not take any pictures of the in progress part of this. And I will put all these little measurements for all the different pieces. Um, I will tell you what sizes my two notches are, and um, like I said, I have the old, I, as much as Stampin' Up! might want to retire the punches and replace them with dies, and I get that, and I own all the dies, um, for some things I still like the punches, and it certainly works a lot easier, like, for making a video or doing a class. So I will tell you what punches I used, you can match the punches or dies, um, and you get the idea that this is the cute little holder. I'll take some pictures, I'll put all those cut score measurements in the blog. And uh, there we go. I'm trying to get them both in the same frame. There we go. So yeah, I would love to know. I'm going to post this video a little bit later, but I would love to know what other uses can you think of other than putting something in this to give it as a gift and then it becomes a little container afterwards. Dimensional holder, desk calendar, receipt holder. What other ones did you come up with? I would love to know. Thank you guys all for showing up. I appreciate it. Um, thank you for uh, being generous to me when I screwed up yesterday. And uh, we will be back live tomorrow at noon. Um, if this weather keeps going, it may be, a, I may have to record a video and just post it, but because um, every now and again, it's very dark and the lights flicker. And so we'll have to see how that all goes. But the plan is I'll see you noon tomorrow with uh, another product on parade. Thanks everyone. Have a great night.